And this time we are going to be dealing with the transmission and uh, getting our get some plate. Here we go. We have got to make a plate. Well, not make a plate, but we're going to take the transfer case apart a little bit. We are going to unbolt the end. It looks like this whole thing should just separate right there. So, they're just going to unbolt all that. And we're going to hopefully be able to use this shaft with the bearing and seal. So the end of the transmission will be fine. And we're going to adapt the other end of the input shaft to be able to take um, well, I'm going to be using, I think I'm going to use this small driver. We're going to, this little will take that drive shaft. Uh, yeah, meant. There, yeah, right. Let's take and take this off. Or are we working with 12? Yeah. Working with a 12. So this is a bit of a problem. We don't really have a big, like, you know, an input shaft like I was hoping. So we just have this gear that would hook up to this and then hook up to the rest of the junk in the transfer case. Well, anyway, this has the bearing and everything. So what I'm thinking is, well, basically the idea here, which this, this part works fine. That'll slide all the way onto there. So we have ourselves a gear, something to deal with on the back of the transmission. This bearing and seal for the transmission, so that'll be all fine, just like it had a transfer case. But we need to get this hooked up to this. What I'm thinking is, well, this is hardened. We're not gonna be able to machine this. Since we, because, well, yeah, no, the original plan was not, isn't going to work. We're not going to be able to machine this, it's real hard. So the idea is since this is spline, or even, well, it's got two larger ones that you might, you might use as a kind of like a keyway, I don't know. We'll make a shaft with a spline on it that'll fit in the gear fine. Which go, which the outer diameter, like on the bottom of it, will match this diameter in here, so we can push it in here, and hopefully I can just TIG weld that in, and that'll work. I don't know, because that welding the hardened steel isn't really great. Like the axles on there, those are hardened, but not nearly as hard as this is. So I'm hoping we can just heat this whole thing up red hot stick it into the sand and let it cool for you know a while and hopefully it'll anneal a little bit and it'll weld a little nicer and I might I'll probably just grind this out a little bit more and we'll, we'll just take it in and hopefully that works and actually there is um might be hard yeah right there can see through there. There's a hole drilled all the way through on the inside, kind of in that groove. And that shaft will probably make it so we can stick a pin in there too to hopefully make it a little stronger. I don't know. It's like I just a weld around here is not going to be that strong, but I don't know what else we can do because we're trying to be cheap here and not have to spend any money. So. I don't even think I'm gonna. I was originally gonna make an, more of a housing, kind of like a tail housing on a two wheel drive transmission with another bearing in it for the shaft before the drive shaft. I'm not gonna bother. This is a big old bearing, and there's a bearing in the back of the transmission. It's just not right at the end, so I think it'll be fine. I don't think we're gonna be putting too much force on there. Alright, so we're hooking up the drive shaft. 
We have this plate from the transfer case that bolts onto the back of the transmission. Um, you know, that interfaces with that. Basically, we need a spline out of here for our drive shaft, so what I happen to find, this is the one for the original rear drive shaft, this is the shaft out of the transfer case to the rear drive shaft. Well, this area here where the bearing press is on is only a few thousandths larger than the inside area of this. I don't know if it's too much of a difference for me to just put this in the freezer and heat that up, the precedent, or if I have to grind this a little bit. Even so, I do that, and then just get the TIG welder and run a bead in there, and we can hook up a drive shaft. I mean, man, it's been a couple weeks once again, but here we go. Got a spline. Came out of the transfer case. This is for the original rear drive shaft. So, well, I'm not going to be using the rear drive shaft. I still want to use the front drive shaft, but the whole the yoke and everything's the same. So I am going to put this on. Or no, 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 no. no, no. This is going on our front drive shaft. Same U joint and everything, so it'll work. I'd way rather use the CV shaft be so much smoother. This is an old one off the Grizzly. It'd be so much smoother, but we're not getting that fancy with this thing yet. This is a uh, budget on this thing. Is, well, so far I've spent no money, so we're going to try and keep it that way. But anyway, it's out of the transfer case. Just cut it off with the acetylene. So the outer... Well, here I'll show. The outer diameter on here it's one point well well one point one one kinda there you go one point one eight this these GoPros are terrible but anyway I wish I had micrometer this is just over an inch so it's a shame. I'd much rather use micrometer in a small bore gauge. I was trying to do an interference fit with calipers. Uh you know not great. But anyway um, the inside of this measures, uh, one point, uh, what is it, one seven nine. <clears throat> so, you know, we're two thou, or, is that two thou? Yeah, it's two thou. Two thou. Just a little too much. One thou, for this size of part, a thou is about what you want for a interference fit, because... Well, I mean, I'm probably going to take this in the seam here, but the interference fit's going to be doing the majority of the work holding this together. But anyway, this just, I'm glad this worked out this way. This just happened to be that size. I don't know what 1.181 metric is. It's probably some of the standard size because the bearing was pressed on here. I didn't look at the number on the bearing. I don't know. It's probably some standard size. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to cut this like right here or something. Uh, Relieve the end there a little, and we'll hope. I mean, I don't want to take any off of this, so I'm just gonna toss this in the freezer. I'm gonna pop this out of the bearing in there. We're gonna change to a sealed bearing only because this is gonna be exposed to the elements outside, so this is gonna be a sealed bearing anyway. I don't really care if I cook the bearing, whatever. Keep this up. This is gonna go in the freezer. We're gonna press it in. Hopefully, I don't have to do anything with this. Um, you know machining it down at all because it's so close I don't have a way to measure that's not accurate enough for really what I'm trying to do but it's what I got and <clears throat> yeah we're gonna do it that's how we do it at JNK good enough all right it's all cleaned up I got the shaft thrown in the freezer and uh it was looking even without having that actually even with this gear being cold from the brake clean um, I was able to push that shaft in, like, just barely catch it in here. So, we might not have an interference fit. We, I mean, uh, yeah, see, this is why calipers, they're good. I love calipers, but this kind of stuff, they just don't work. 
but um, that's what I got. I'm not, because I was going to kind of not bore this, but take a little bit of material off in here to help it along, so I figured, because the way I measured it, it was two to three thousandths gap, but we'll have to work. All right, part is on the press. I'm just gonna warm this up with the heat gun. It doesn't need to be nothing crazy. I don't think it's actually gonna be an interference fit. It doesn't seem like it. I have got shaft in here cooling down, and we will be all set. Be meant. So, as you saw, that just fell in by hand, so it's not going to be a, uh, I forget what the classes are, whatever they are for interference fits, but anyway, as you can see, this, this is able to turn in here and move right now. This is still cold and the gear is still hot. When I first put it in there as play, there, there's, I can't show it, but there's really no slop in it anymore, you can't feel any play in this anymore, so it's slowly shrinking. It'll probably shrink to the point where I can't turn this, but... I'm just going to do this fillet in here with the TIG welder. Tomorrow, maybe. We'll take it up. And hopefully it holds. We have made progress. I forgot to film. I didn't bring my camera. But I TIG welded our shaft into here. So that should be pretty solid, I hope. A little bit of undercut. I don't care. It'll work. Anyway. This runs true, drive shaft can hug up. Now we have our four wheel converted, or two wheel converted, four wheel transmission. From, without buying any parts anyway, you got a TIG welder, easy to do. On this ASIN, I don't know, I forget what the number is on this tranny, but yeah, it works. So, we're finally going to be able to make a drive shaft real quick, hook it up, and um, see where, how we can mount things, and how we need to extend stuff, and yeah, this is all set. I'm gonna be replacing the bearing here. You can see it's open in there. We're gonna put a sealed <coughs> deep groove ball bearing in there. And uh, hopefully it'll handle the elements a little better. Probably won't last as long, but uh, this thing's not gonna see many miles anyway, I don't think. I think it'll be fine. The sealed bearing in there so it didn't get covered and filled with mud and junk. We all set. Here we go. And you can see the. Well, and it's still hard to see, but there is play on that, and that's why we had to do this. Actually, support the the transmission. Well, that's on there. It's in park right now, so it won't move. But there we go. There she is. Alright, this is my setup. I got two V blocks clamped together. Um, I have the uh, the straight edge to uh, you know I made them even. And both the yokes clamped to the uh, V blocks there. I got three tacks on it right now. I've been putting the uh, straight edge in across those faces shining a light there. They're close enough. This whole thing's about close enough. Little vibrations shouldn't shouldn't kill us. So gonna uh, get a fourth tag on there, double check it and fully weld it. We are finally ready to put the motor in and actually bolt it up right there. Once I finally weld this frame together and make sure it's square before I do. But look at this minkiness. We've got well, let me get the 
assistance here. We got it all. I got it all mentally. You, know, you can't do cold stuff with these. Take well in there. Drive shaft is just mig. Man, short as can be. Yoke to yoke. So that's what it is. I actually got all. I had two good U joints out of the old drive shafts. So don't need to buy nothing. There is still. Uh, it's not gonna come up to the camera. There is play in this bearing because there's play in the spline on the other end of this. So we can't rely on the bearing in here, like further in here. So I think since this is gonna be dead space anyway, I'll put a bearing right here. And then we'll make some sort of something that bolts on here to hold to support this. So we don't wear stuff out, and I really don't. I really don't want to do that because there's gonna. Ha there's no way this is gonna be balanced or perfect. It's gonna vibrate, so I don't want that vibration to damage anything with the tranny. So probably put another bearing right on here. We have this area right here to work with. This I melted the coating on this a little bit. I gotta clean it up. But this will slide all the way up to there, which we're definitely going to do uh, on account of our length restriction. But this whole assembly is about as long as the transfer case was, was. but the, point of the, the whole point of doing this whole cobblery here, because even if I left the transfer case, it's the same length as this, I would have had this to here still off the back of the transfer case so that would have brought our total thing out to here and that's just not gonna work without making this thing look ridiculous and you know have a terrible turning rate. It's already big. It's already about five inches longer than this factory. And it was already pretty long from the factory, but uh, the turning radius on it wasn't that great anyway, factory, but this will you know, it'll work. It'll be good enough.